human questions that have been posed. But we are at the very beginning of searching. Surely it is important for us to know the answer. One thing that interests me a great deal is the way in which the public perception of uh, beings from outer space have, have changed over the years. They used to be the baddies. But now there is a, there's a sort of optimistic feeling that, that any extraterrestrial life is, if not benign, is at least not as, as hostile and aggressive as one used to fear. Is this the drift of your writing as well, Arthur, uh, your thinking? I, yes, I'm an optimist, and I believe that any malevolent super-civilization would rapidly self-destruct, as we may be in the process of doing ourselves. So if we do have contact, physical contact with aliens, I think it will be benign. My frivolous mind is much there taken... Are very intelligent beings recently here. Why have they not visited us? Well, that's a very good question. Let's throw it right across to Arthur Clarke. There are literally dozens of answers to this. They may have come in the remote past. They may be visiting us every 10,000 years. I mean, the universe is a huge place, and even if there are fleets of survey ships going all over the, the cosmos, we shouldn't expect visitors less than I say every thousand years or so. They may know all about us and they may have put a quarantine around our planet for pretty good reasons. They may be totally uninterested in us, they may be so much higher that they, you know, we're just beneath their, beneath contempt if you like. That we don't, you can speculate endlessly. I think we should just wait and try and get more evidence. Maybe their space probes are saying there's no intelligent life on Earth. They may have received our television programs and decided that that is the case. <laughs> may I um, uh, attempt a, a different answer to, uh, to Stephen's question? Please do, Carl Sagan. Um, the, uh, the first large-scale commercial broadcasting on the Earth was in the late 1940s. Uh, so that's, what, uh, 40 years ago. So you must imagine a spherical wave expanding out from the earth at the velocity of light which contains all the dreary programs of the late 1940s since then that expanding spherical wave containing the uh, news of a developing civilization on earth has traveled some 40 light years suppose that there are no civilizations closer than 40 light years Perhaps they're not here because they don't know we are about just yet. But uh, in time, the message gets to them. And uh, perhaps they uh, send a little expedition to look us over. I, I was delighted when I read that when space probes went out, out first of all, you put the figure of... Um, a of a man and a woman on the outside so that any alien life would recognize what we looked like and then in a latest probe I think you put in an LP of earth sounds with uh, instructions in hand signals on on how to work the LP how do you think anybody would have reacted if in fact alien intelligence had heard this LP <laughs> my guess is that it'd be something like uh Oh, look, another artifact from uh, some extremely primitive civilization. Which one is this? Uh, but then some degree of uh, thanks that uh, we were thoughtful enough to send a message into the far future, which could in no way benefit us. Uh, certainly a selfless act. And uh, perhaps it would be recognized as a um, hopeful and optimistic gesture by a, uh, an emerging civilization just setting foot into the great galactic wilderness. Yes, Arthur. I know what is going to happen to your voyagers, Carl. They'll be overtaken one day by a terrestrial spaceship and brought back to the Smithsonian. It, uh, it's certainly technologically possible, but I hope they uh, let it go on its uh, original mission. Now, it's very nearly 20 years ago since man landed on the moon. Do you think that we've basically stopped trying to get man any further? Is there any chance that another Neil Armstrong will set foot on Mars in our lifetime? The United States and the Soviet Union have managed to uh, booby-trap the planet with about 60,000 nuclear weapons, with a little help from Britain, France, China, and Israel. Uh, a tiny fraction of those weapons is enough to uh, destroy the participating nations, uh, certainly, the global civilization possibly, and uh, the human species just maybe. Uh, it is now time 
for the United States and the Soviet Union to demonstrate that they can undo this specter, that they can demonstrate their ability to work together on high technology for peaceful, uh, hopeful purposes that carry us into a benign 21st century. And uh, that is why I support the idea of joint U.S.-Soviet cooperation in the exploration of Mars leading up to a, uh, an international manned and, by the way, womaned uh, mission to the planet. Americans and Soviets, as representatives of the human species, other nations, I presume, would also be involved. And then a glorious, whatever it would be, few-month period in which Mars, I, I have a globe of it right next to me, in which Mars would be explored. There are hundreds, for example, hundreds of ancient river valleys uh, on Mars. Mars is today bone dry. It was once much warmer, much wetter, much denser atmosphere, much more Earth-like. What were those conditions like? Why did an Earth-like planet get converted into this deep ice age condition that uh, Mars has? has today. And <clears throat> is there life there? Could there once have been life? Are there fossil forms? There are extraordinary, enigmatic geological features on the planet. What is their nature? There is a huge amount of exploration to do. Uh, and all of it, every step that I've described, could be before the television cameras of the world. And we could all participate in such exploration. Is not a danger that, that the human bits that we take with us will pollute and destroy something enormously precious out there simply because we are so, so inquisitive about it? Arthur. Well, <clears throat> as to the question, should human beings go into the other planets, I think the answer to that is, well, we could have stayed in Europe and explored America by robots. It might have been, uh, it certainly saved a lot of human lives, but of course we didn't, we went there and lived in this new continent. Now admittedly, Mars, in fact none of the planets in the solar system, is anything like as benign as the United States or the other parts of this planet, but one day people are going to call them home. There will be Martians one day, and they'll be our great-grandchildren, and they'll think it was, Earth probably is a horrible place in which to live. Now, as to whether we will pollute these environments, yes, to some extent, of course, Colonization always it involves the destruction of what was there first. And I'm quite sure in the next century, in fact, already it started as a conference on the pollution of space planned in the, near, in the United States in the very near future. This is already a serious problem in near Earth space. But we have to control it. I mean, you, ca you have to cut down forests on this Earth to make new cities. And on, on the moon, I'm afraid one day we may have to abolish much of the lunar vac vacuum. And on Mars, we may have to change the atmosphere. But I do hope we will leave, leave bits of the universe in a pristine condition. But are we also going to have to change ourselves on Mars? I mean, are we going to, have to evolve change, differently? Mars will change us. In fact, this is part of the evolutionary progress. By going out into new environments, by occupying new biological niches, that is the way we progress and discover the universe and explore the, and, and perhaps fulfill our destiny. Do you think that other planets might have uh, the same kind of system in which there would be a morality, in which there would be people taking moral attitudes, which may not necessarily be the same as ours, of course. Well, all societies must have some moral structure. I mean, otherwise you just can't have a society. I mean, there must be understand rules, the way you behave to our neighbors. And even if the societies consist of machines, they must have a machine language so they can agree to react together. So morality in some way is essential and universal. Now, Professor Hawking, in the very last paragraph of your book, you say that if we discover a complete theory of, of the universe, then um, it should in time be understandable in broad principle to everyone and not just to a few scientists. And when that happens, all of us will be able to start discussing the why rather than the how. And I quote, if we find the answer to that, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason, for then we would know the mind of God. Do you think that God can intervene in the universe as he wants, or is God too bound by the laws of science? The question of whether God is bound by the laws of science is a bit like your question. 
and God make the stones that is so heavy that he cannot